and today we're going to be talking about the five different types of fog. So let's start out before we get into the five different types, let's just talk about what is fog really quick. Fog is essentially just a cloud that is on or very near to the surface of the earth. And it typically occurs when the temperature of the air near the ground is cooled to the air's dew point. So once that air is cooled to the dew point, it will condense and form fog. Like so. Here's fog, obviously. So fog is classified according to the manner in which it forms, and there are five types. Radiation fog, advection fog, upslope fog, steam fog, and ice fog. And we're going to go through these five different types and talk about how they form, and then you can know which type of fog is which according to how it is created. First, we have radiation fog. How does it form? Radiation fog forms on clear nights when there is relatively little to no wind, so not a lot of wind with radiation fog. This type of fog occurs when the ground cools rapidly due to terrestrial radiation and the surrounding air temperature reaches its dew point. What are we talking about with terrestrial radiation? It's just at night when the earth gets colder. You don't have the sun heating up the earth, so it gets colder. So what happens is the land gets colder. It makes the air just above the surface of the earth cool to its dew point and it creates fog. Where is radiation fog most commonly found? It is usually found in low-lying areas like mountain valleys and it looks like this. So you can see these mountain valleys and the fog down in the valley here. Remember with radiation fog it's little to no wind and it's when the ground cools the air just above it until the air reaches that dew point and creates fog. Second one is advection fog. How does it form? It forms when a layer of warm, moist air moves over a colder surface and cools to its dew point. So we've got warm, moist air. That warm, moist air needs to move over a colder surface. It'll cool to its dew point, and then it can become fog. Wind is required for advection fog to develop, usually up to about 15 knots. So if you have 15 knots or less of wind, you can get this advection fog. The reason you need fog, or sorry, wind for advection fog is because you need to take that warm, moist air somehow and move it over colder land. To do that, you obviously need wind. However, if you get above about 15 knot winds, what happens is that fog will actually begin to lift and form low stratus clouds. So 15 knots or less, and it's when you're taking warm, moist air and you're moving it older, over a colder surface. Where is advection fog most commonly found? in coastal areas with sea breezes, and it looks like this. So you can see this a lot of times in the morning in coastal areas when we're taking that warm, moist air, we got some wind and we're pushing it over colder land. That colder land cools it to the dew point and it creates advection fog, most commonly found in coastal areas. Then we have upslope fog. How does this one form? It forms when moist, stable air is forced up sloping land features like mountain ranges. This one is obviously going to need wind because you need to take that moist stable air and move it up a mountain range and as it moves up the mountain range or hill it cools as it gets higher in the atmosphere and it becomes fog. With upslope fog it may not burn off with the morning sun like advection fog but it can persist for days. It can persist and hang out for a long time. Where is it going to be found? Obviously around sloping terrain features like hills and mountain ranges and it looks like this. We've taken, the wind has taken this moist air, pushed it up the mountain slope, and as it goes higher and higher and higher up the mountain, it gets colder and colder and colder, gets to its dew point, and creates fog. Steam fog, number four, how it forms. It forms when cool, dry air moves over relatively warmer water. So this one's almost the opposite of advection fog. With advection fog, we had the warm, moist air moving over the colder land, with steam fog, we've got cold, dry air moving over warm water. And it kind of looks like smoke, and that's why it is sometimes called sea smoke. It's going to be found over bodies of water during the coldest times of the year. So when it's really, really cold outside, you can get this cold, dry air moving over warmer water. That warmer water, the air comes, or sorry, the condensation comes off that warmer water and can condense to the dew point and create fog or steam fog or sea smoke is another name for it. And then the last one we have is ice fog. How does it form? It forms in very cold weather when the temperature is much below freezing, like negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit or colder is what's most favorable for ice fog. This type of fog 
forms because the water vapor in the air is forming directly in the ice crystal. So all air has some water vapor in it, but since it's so cold outside, that, those wa that water vapor in the air is freezing almost instantly and turning into ice fog. Where is it found? In Arctic regions of the world or in very, very cold temperatures. You can get it in the middle latitudes as well. It's not just at the North and South Pole. You can also get it in the middle latitudes of the Earth, but it needs to be in very cold temperatures, like we said before. And it looks like this. Where those, the water vapor is turning directly into ice crystals because of how cold the temperature is outside. And that's it for our five types of fog. That was a quick Tuesday tip and trick for you. For all the best aviation study tips and tricks, and to study hundreds of hours of free content, visit our website at wificfi.com, and you can also study on our free mobile app. So check it out, www.wificfi.com. We've got tons of tricks, and again, hundreds of hours of free full-length courses that you can study. So thanks for joining us on this tip, guys, and we'll see you next Tuesday.